Danger Dolan. From half-forgotten games that were never released in the West, to classics that everyone's already played but would gladly play again, we count 15 games that deserve a remake. Number 15. Kingsfield 1-3. The Kingsfield games are made by From Software and are the spiritual predecessors for the Soul series. Most people haven't played Kingsfield 1 as it was only released in Japanese. If they got a fresh coat of paint, translated from Japanese and revamped controls, they'd almost certainly be well received worldwide. The games were brutal first person action games where you traversed, got lost, found treasure, and died over and over again until you finally got good. Number 14. Silent Hill. The first Silent Hill was a resounding success, but for better or worse, it was also missed out from the Silent Hill HD Remake Collection. I mean, sure, the HD Collection did more harm than good, but that doesn't mean that Silent Hill doesn't deserve a graphics update. With PT level graphics, you'd get to crap your pants all over rusty shit and thick fog all over again. And think of the children who would get to watch their favourite Swedish Let's Player act all scared over it. There's money to be made there, that's for sure. Number 13. Warcraft 3. It wasn't easy deciding which Blizzard RTS deserved to remake the most, but when it comes down to it, the Warcraft 3 engine produced some of, if not the best modding experience known to gaming. Yes, even better than the Elder Scrolls. Unfortunately, the StarCraft 2 mapmaker was two steps forward, three steps backwards, so if Blizzard re-released Warcraft 3 with updated graphics, whilst keeping the same engine, good things would happen. Now the map maker isn't the only good thing about Warcraft 3, the single player campaign is one of the best RTS experiences with little stagnation of gameplay, good progression and a story that kickstarted WoW, it more than deserves to sparkle. Number 12. Vampire The Masquerade Bloodlines One of the most beloved cult classics held back by its state of conception along with a litany of bugs, glitches and an all round lack of polish. Graphics and technical difficulties aside, it's a fantastic game that definitely holds up by today's standards. Every RPG fan should give this game a try. If this game were remade to fix its flaws, it has the potential to be a perfect 10. Just remember not to open it when you give it a shot. Number 11. The Banjo Duology. Banjo Kazooie and Tui are two big reasons why many people look back at the Nintendo 64 fondly. Of course, the problem with the N64 is it has terrible graphic standards and even worse controls. Both of these problems could be easily fixed if it were made using modern graphics and controllers. Hopefully when they do remake it, they'll keep in the elusive penis island for all to enjoy. Number 10. Mother 1. Everyone and their mum loves Earthbound and Mother 3, but very few have had the chance to play Mother legally, and fewer still the chance to enjoy it in full. Mother 1 wasn't released in the West, so you need a Nintendo Famicom as well as the ability to speak Japanese in order to play it and enjoy the story. Not only that, but Mother 1 is also a rather old game, and as such has poor graphical fidelity and limited game mechanics, both problems that could be made right with a remake. And like your mum, who knows exactly what you want for dinner, Nintendo have just released this bad boy for the Wii U Virtual Console. Number 9. Doom 1 and 2. Doom is still a great game to this day. Running and gunning your way to a keycard whilst fighting off a horde of demonic sprites is a lot of fun. All that really needs to be done to make Doom a better modern game is making it 3D, or at least put in HD sprites. Putting in the option to turn on the ability to aim up and down would also be good, but please don't add in the pointless modern features like iron sights or reloading. Number 8. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 The KOTOR games are some of the best RPG experiences out there. They gave a brand new perspective to the Star Wars universe, and the plot for both games was genuinely quite good. However, the combat is simplistic at best, and while the graphics are stylized enough to keep the game from suffering too much from age, they would do well with a higher polygon count, better post-processing, and higher resolution textures. Oh, and it would be great if they put in the proper ending to KOTOR 2, the one the developers originally intended. Number 7 Metal Gear 1 and 2 Hideo Kojima pointed at the possibility of a remake of these games before he got fired out of a cannon by Konami. He explained himself that it would be an ideal opportunity to resolve the plot inconsistencies in the game's storylines. Of course, there's also the fact that it's made to run on the NES, and it had graphics that were described as acceptable at the time. Translating that in today's standards, of course, means they look like a painting made from a diamond dog turd. Number 6. Star Wars X-Wing vs TIE Fighter This game has some of the most fun dogfighting multiplayer in any space sim. The main problem is it's a pain to get it to run on modern machines as it has bad graphics. This makes it hard to convince friends to play with me. So if someone could remake this with higher fidelity graphics and include support for a Windows version later than Windows 98, I'd be incredibly grateful. Number 5 The System Shock Duology Another duology and another brilliant set of games. System Shock 1 and 2 are amazing survival horror sci-fi RPGs where you fight against the 2001 A Space Odyssey inspired AI, Shodan. System Shock isn't quite as good as 2001, but that doesn't mean it isn't worth playing. However, the prehistoric graphics are so sharp, they can and will poke your eyes out and cause blindness. Number 4 Freelancer 
Easily the best arcade style combat space sim money can buy. It's so popular in fact that its modding community is still very much alive to this day. But the modders can only do so much to upraise the graphics. And let's face it, when you're playing a space game, you want VR support as well as everything to be as pretty as possible so you can actually feel like you're in space. Number 3. Deuce X. If you haven't played Deuce X, you're missing out on an amazing game. Don't let the tutorial level Liberty Island and the horrible graphics keep you away. If IDOS remade Deuce X, keeping in everything that made it good, while also maybe cutting out some of the fat, it would sell just as well, if not better than Human Revolution. Considering that half the work is already done, it's quizzical they haven't already done this. Plus, it's hard to take a character seriously when he's wearing glasses, but has no ears to put them on. I mean, how does that even work? No JC, tattooing them on doesn't fix the problem. Number 2. Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Metroid Zero Mission breathed new life into the original NES game and did quite well in the Game Boy Advance, so a Metroid 2 equivalent is obviously very desirable. Some might say that adding a map isn't necessary, but I say that it's definitely an improvement for me. This is mostly due to the fact that my sense of direction is so bad I've been known to get lost in my own house. Yeah. Number 1. Final Fantasy 7 Yes, it's an obvious choice, but for good reason. Final Fantasy 7 is a fan favourite and I consider myself one of those fans. Early polygonal graphics categorically suck balls unless you want something to look unsettling, which I'm sure isn't the intention for Final Fantasy 7. And if like me you heard that it's being re-released this week, I did a dance, and you probably did too, you huge dork. Danger Dolan here, I just came across this bit in the recording as I was editing the video together and I just want to input that this fucking game is gonna be amazing. Although I do fear that Square Enix is just gonna mess it up, but it's still exciting because we get to see the old characters come back in the high definition. That's it for this countdown. And have a good one!